Hi, and welcome to the video on infrared spectroscopy, or IR. The key idea with infrared is that each type of bond, for example CH versus CO, vibrates at a specific frequency in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. That frequency is reported in wave numbers. A number of vibrational modes are possible in molecules. At the top left hand side of the screen is a symmetric stretch. At the same time, both of these protons on the carbon are stretching away from carbon, then back toward carbon, away and back, away and back. Another vibration is an asymmetric stretch, where one of the bonds would be lengthening while the other bond is shortening. Those stretches have distinct frequencies depending on the two nuclei involved. For example, CHs stretch and retract at a higher frequency than do carbon-oxygen bonds. Other types of vibrations are called bending vibrations. Here, two protons bending close together and farther away, closer, farther, closer, farther. Rocking a bit like a rocking chair, or wagging like a dog wagging its tail back and forth, and twisting. These protons will be twisting away from each other. We focus on the stretching vibrations, at least for the initial interpretation. When many frequencies are of infrared light are shone on a sample, the frequencies that match bond stretching and bending modes are absorbed. We record the frequencies of light that are transmitted as those waves hit a detector. There are lots of overlapping bending vibrations that appear in the area just under 1500 wave numbers, so we tend to ignore this region. On screen are the different types of functional groups, the bond in question in the right hand column, and then what frequency that bond would absorb or where they would be found on the infrared spectrum. For example, a CH alkyl group would be found or has a stretching frequency between 2850 and 2960 wave numbers. SP2 hybridized CH groups vibrate at just over 3000 wave numbers. Carbonyl stretching frequencies come at about 1750. That's a key stretch to memorize because we see it so often. And then you can see other functional groups, such as nitrile, alkynyl, etc. Take note especially of the alkynyl groups, which have an SP hybridized CH stretch and a CC triple bond stretch. In the right hand column is a description of the peak shapes. M is for medium intensity. Notice the acidic protons on oxygen or nitrogen have broader peaks, BR. S is for strong. These are large peaks. The carbonyl stretch is a strong peak that is sharp. The nitrile is variable, V, although it is typically sharp. There's a variable peak for the alkynyl CC stretch, although it's sharp. I will give this table to you on exams, but at the very least do memorize the carbonyl stretching frequency because we see it so often. Here is a very typical type of infrared spectrum. On the y-axis is transmittance, the infrared light that was transmitted or not absorbed by the sample. On the x-axis is wave numbers, going from about 500 to 4000 wave numbers. That gives us the frequency of each of these stretches. 100% transmittance would mean that the frequency in question is not absorbed at all by the molecule, that there's no bending or stretching in the molecule that matches that frequency. It's like a type of baseline. 0% transmittance corresponds to 100% absorbance of a given frequency. So for that example, this very strong sharp peak at this frequency means that functional group there has almost completely absorbed that energy, the energy at that wavelength. Notice for this area, the peak is over 1700. This is a very typical carbonyl stretch, a strong sharp peak. As I mentioned before, because there are so many peaks under 1500, we tend to ignore them. They're not particularly useful for our purposes in this course. This is called the fingerprint region because it is unique for every single type of molecule, and so it can be used as a molecular fingerprint. Just under 3000 is where we find the sp3 hybridized CH stretches. We see them in almost every single molecule, because most molecules have sp3 hybridized CH bonds. It's good to take note of them, but that we can dismiss them because they're not particularly useful most of the time and we ignore all these little peaks near the baseline. If we take a look at the bottom right, we can see this molecule did indeed have a carbonyl functional group. This molecule contains an ester that has a CO double bond, lots of sp3 hybridized CHs, no sp2 hybridized CHs, 
no alkene, no benzene, we would see those CH stretches just above 3000. No acidic protons, we would see them as strong broad peaks around 3300.